<laughs> Sorry, this ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Good evening and welcome. And thank you for staying on after this fantastic show. Um, I'm going to book it for my next big party, I think. I'm sure you're all in the same. I thought the, uh, the, the choice of material, the blending of it, the surprises, four songs from Dick Tracy, uh, Anyone Can Whistle, um, a song I'd forgotten, actually, from Assassins, the duet on the, yeah. on the couch. It was a, it was a beautiful... Uh, selection. Anyway, I'm Michael Coveney from What's On Stage, and this is Alex, uh, Alistair Knights, the young director. <laughs> and, Matthew, and Matthew Rowland, the choreographer. <laughs> and so the main, the actors have taken their time. And they <laughs> are, <laughs> sorry, they'll be, they're coming As down usual, in I a mean, minute. One of them turns up late, the rest of them, you know, I know. keep us waiting. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the idea is really that uh, I'm just here to facilitate your, your interaction with this uh, um, company and the, the, these good people. And so we'll start a conversation, and then we want to be out of here at quarter past ten, because um, otherwise you'll be locked out or you, won't, you know, may have trouble if it's raining. Um, but we keep it short and sweet. And I'd, I'd like to start by really... Um, uh, the history of this show is quite interesting. Um, it was always the case that side by side by Sondheim, the first cabaret, which was authorised, if you like, by, by Sondheim, produced by Cameron Mackintosh, and his first success as a producer, was the longest running Sondheim show. I mean, I'd, oh, really? I'm so old, I saw company three times at Her Majesty's, but it only ran a year. Right. And then the next long runner was a little night music with Gene Simmons and that wonderful cast and Liz Robertson in the chorus, and that ran a year. Um, <clears throat> and nothing else has really run you know, which is al always a source of bemusement to me because everyone loves the stuff so much. And uh, it's not just the fans. I, I noticed such a mixed audience tonight mm. of unexpected people here and um, people, I, uh, you know, some of the people I haven't seen for a long time. And they all come because they love Sondheim, they love Janie D, and <laughs> they, they quite like the others by the time they left. <laughs> 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 but, um, so the history of it is that it was done in New York with Julie Andrews, a producer. It was done first in Oxford, actually, here. Oh, right, okay, tell us they the story. Did it, they did it in Oxford with Diana Wigg, That's I think right. in 1992. Very scratchy, scrappy version of uh, the old fire station, I think it is, I'm not sure. I know, exactly. Yeah, um, but then it was, and it, and then it was in Ju with Julie Andrews off-Broadway in, I think, 1993, and then again in 1999 on Broadway with Carol Burnett and Ruthie Henshaw and John Barrowman. And then I think they did it, we said this, I think they did it in Chichester about 10 years ago, but it's never been done in London before. No. Um, so it's an, ama an amazing thing because what it shows you, I think, is that so many of the songs uh, are, play are playlets. And the way you did it, the way they performed it, there, there were sort of stories within the songs. Yeah. You mm -hmm. had the couples, you had the cocktail party, and you had that wonderful thing you always get of being in love and not being quite in love, the mm -hmm. double-edged thing all the way through. And so, how did you how did you make the selections? I mean, I'm I'm not going to complain about anything missing. Maybe our friends will, um, but you seem to have covered the waterfront. And yeah, well, this is the licensed version that was done in 1999 with a few little changes. So it's you have very similar you've inherited to the that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just we've cut little bits and added tiny little tweaks here and there. Nothing massively notable. I do remember the first day because we did this production in Guildford for four performances before coming here. I remember the first day we came to the rehearsal and we discussed the production and I remember Janie being quite vocal in that so we're, in a, we're in a party the whole time and she couldn't, we, we kind of had to get our head around that it was this kind of like every song was, is almost episodic, like it's, it's like unique moments that you kind of flash in and out of. Yeah, rather Janie than had seen the production in New York with Julie Andrews and was a huge fan of it and, um, but I found the DVD, I don't know if anyone's seen the YouTube um, DVD with Ruthie Henshaw and Carol Burnett. Don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing like this. And it's very flash. They're in a big Broadway house. It's very flash and there's neon lights and it's all going on. And I just went, oh my God, I don't want it to be anything like that. That's not sometimes. Sometimes not flashing lights yeah. and, you know, and big jazz hands. It's, well, it sometimes is in a, in a very good way. Um, so I went into this going, I just don't want it to, I want to strip that completely bare. And that's why we've only, you know, the set you see here is just a chaise and a few glasses. Um, and yeah, going into it and not being so, so sort of overwhelmed by this cocktail party, just going into each song and finding moments within each song and treating it as, a, as an individual playlet, really, yeah. So how do you, uh, are the pair, are the, is the distribution of the material the same? 
Yeah, I mean, the same five people equivalent to the same five people. Yes. Indeed. And the arrangements along the way, I mean, the... A couple of little, couple of little changes. I mean, with, uh, <laughs> with Quintet for being alive. Oh, but yeah, well, Jonathan Tunick that's his arranged one. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's gorgeous. gorgeous. I know, it's one of the best bits in the show, isn't it? It's beautiful. Oh. Good. Um, well, I don't know... Uh, <laughs> Um, Sorry, it's just us two. They are coming. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. Chatting. I know, we're so disappointing. But yeah. So, what, what we want to know a couple of things, really. Um, is this going to transfer? What is, I mean, there is a rumour. Uh, oh, is there? Well, I don't know. That's how rumours start. Someone says there's a rumour. Um, but of course, Janie D is uh, contracted to appear in Blythe Spirit with yeah. Angela Lansbury, who was in the first production, and I've got the vinyl to prove it. <coughs> Anyone can whistle. She was, and she was fantastic in that. And she's coming to this on Saturday night. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> um, I know, which is amazing. She just started rehearsals for that today. Um, yeah, so it would, it would have to be after that because we obviously keep it with the, this cast. This cast is kind of such a tight knit ensemble, both all the creatives and the cast and the band as well. Mm. Mm. Everyone's comment looks about twelve. Apparently, they're not very young. Um, the majority of them are at uni- yeah. music college still. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you don't have to pay them properly. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do. Trust me. Um, so, yeah, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it's a Cameron Macintosh piece, and Cameron came to our first preview and loved it. So it would be nice, wouldn't it, Cameron? Come on. Mm. Come on, Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> but where would your, your ideal theatre be? It's got a nice intimate theatre. looking at the Wyndhams, I think, maybe. This is all rumour, by the yeah. way. But do spread it, because it might not <laughs> <laughs> Good. Now, is there anyone who would like to ask a question of the, of the, of the director or, or, or Matthew and how he did that wonderful choreography? I noticed there's no, there's no tap shoes. The, the, the shoes are very soft, aren't they? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, the wonderful number that uh, he's, he's my turn now, he says. But he's blue, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, David, uh, Daniel Crossley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was beautifully danced yeah. and, and performed. Um, how do you, how do you uh, get these guys into shape? Well, the thing is, uh, everybody asks me, and I just go, how can, how can you choreograph David Crossley? He's just played Cosmo and singing in the rain. Yeah. I mean, this collection of five cast members, it's hard to go wrong, really, with them anyway. But um, the fact, I think, that we came in from Guildford, where it was almost like a workshop production, because we had about 60 people in the audience a night, and we only had four shows, and we were kind of just exploring the material. For yeah. one and a half weeks we had to put it on in Guildford, we had two weeks to put it on in here. And it was kind of just a collaborative process of putting it all together. And um, luckily, you know. Luckily it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and everyone seems to like it. Which I think there's a cast, some cast members oh, here. Come here. on through. Come through. Yeah. Here they oh. come. <laughs> Daniel Humbly, uh, no, I got <laughs> that wrong, didn't I? Oh, Damien yeah, Humbly, Daniel uh, Crossley, yeah. Caroline Sheen, and Satanic David Badella. Oh. Yeah, they all are. Uh, we've lost Janie D. She obviously gets home just as complicatedly as she does when she arrives. <laughs> she, she's actually off to perform in a cabaret. So this week she's rehearsing Blind Spirit during the day, performing, putting it together in the evening, mm-hmm. and performing a cabaret in the evening. So she's got quite the hectic schedule. Yeah. 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 She did send her apologies. Yeah. She, she said to specifically say she's trying to get ahead of the game while she can. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were just talking about how the show, the history of the show, and how it was compiled, and how you five correspond to the five who played it all the way, all the way along, uh, yeah. or pr- originally. Um, <laughs> but and so you've all got your moments, you've all got your your crisscrossing uh, relationships falling apart and coming together at the cocktail party. Mm. But it's as though I, I, there was one of one or two of the songs. I was thinking, well, I'm watching an RB play here. You know, you're mm. watching mm. something so intense and emotional. And sometimes people say Sondheim doesn't have a heart, you know. And almost every song kind of contradicts that. Um, but it is this thing of coming together and falling apart. And mm. I've, I just wondered, on behalf of our friends here, who I hope will ask their own questions, which, is, which for you is your favourite moment in the show? Um, My favourite moment. Well, we know what yours is. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell. My favourite moment is Country House. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's my favourite because I do, you might have noticed, but I do a lot of watching and sitting and watching everybody else. And every single time I listen to it, I, I just think how amazingly clever it is, how, how 
the contradictions and the interruptions and the, you know, the all uh, the the million different things that come so together to make it so to make it so brilliant. I mean, I I haven't unlike everybody else, I haven't, I haven't done any Sundown before, so this is uh, this is a relatively new experience for me. So that number in particular, I kind of sit and listen to it every night and feel as if I discover something new in it every night. I mean, it's, they do it so brilliantly. And um, so that's my favourite moment. What's your favourite moment? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it odd for you, Damien, having, having done Merrily and, and coming to a sort of a show where there's bits of it? Uh, you know what? It's not really because it's all different situations, isn't it? I mean, you take Good Thing Going, for example. Um, in the show Merrily, Charlie sings it as, at the piano as a song that they've written together. Uh, and the lyrics mean something for the audience, but they don't necessarily mean something for... Charlie, whereas, uh, you know, David's singing it full-voiced and singing it to the lyric of the song, which uh, is a very different situation. So it's all, it's all very different, isn't it? So uh, it's not like it is in, in Maryland. It's not like it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, what, what, what's your Sondheim sort of... Where's your crisscrossing in this show with Sondheim um, you've done? I think my favourite is... My favourite song is Lovely, that I do, <laughs> because I have such happy memories of doing it Ten years ago at, at the National, I, I played the same. Well, I played the role that sang that song, and it's like it's slightly different in this interpretation. I'm not Welsh in, in this one. I did it Welsh <laughs> at the National, um, so that's for me as as a fond memory and a bit of nostalgia. That's my favourite for me. But I think, yeah, I, I I love also seeing Jamie tirade through getting married today, <laughs> and I just think if I if I ever sing that song in future, I'll just have her in my head all the time because it's just such a <coughs> brilliant delivery of it. It's unforgettable and I just love hearing her go go at that hammer and tongs mm -hmm. every night. It's, yeah. it's inspiring, yeah. to say the least. Articulation is phenomenal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, very difficult. David, what's your <coughs> uh, overlap? I had the giggles doing that at the we beginning noticed. tonight. I Did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the the, I the, uh, the armoire, <laughs> the armoire, what do you call it here? Uh, uh, chaise, lounge. chaise lounge. Chaise lounge. So uh, was so close to the table <laughs> that we couldn't get and I had to turn <laughs> sideways to wiggle through it. And I thought, oh, that's fine, I'll be okay. And just as I turned the corner, Damien looked over and went... <laughs> <laughs> See, I and got I thought, through it all right, and I looked behind me and said, oh, that's It was like a little, little fat, a little bit of that. Little bit of that. Um, favorite songs. I, I'm going to say two. Um, f from my personal um, love, I love standing there while Janie sings... Um, uh, Charlie, why can't it be like it was? I think it's so moving, and, and uh, it, it's the culmination of all of the emotions coming together for resolution. Um, and really, that's the whole purpose of the show. It, you wait for the resolution, and are they going to make it? Are they not? Um, I like that. Um, it's very fulfilling for me. Also, um, uh, Buddy's Blues, I think there are very few actors around today who can um, pull off the precision that it takes to do those kinds of lyrics, that kind of movement, and do it like a machine night after night. Mm. And, uh, and we're lucky, we've got Danny, and um, I think there are very few people that can pull that off. Mm. So that's a thing. <laughs> now, come along. Um, you must have something to ask our... Any, anyone? Hands up. And in the front there, Mr. Permit. Um, and this is for the directors. Was it your idea to do everyone ought to have a maid as a man and a woman? Because I've always no, that's seen it done as yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it normally is all men. No, that's that's in the um, in the in the yeah the licensed version. But I think our version's a lot it's sexier. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's thanks to Janie D. Janie D is <laughs> filthy. We start um, big. We? We and I didn't remember the first day we did that. It's in Guildford. It was in Guildford, it was literally just the reprise was just you two rolling around on oh, the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was never meant to be that saucy. When I when I when I first listened to it, I certainly don't think of them doing what we're doing. <laughs> but she was like, "Oh, darling, come on, we need to do this." So we just, <laughs> shouldn't we get naked? No, we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. She has done a few times. She has. Yeah. yeah. There's no. There's no. Uh, I was going to say there's no Quite holes revealing. barred. That's <laughs> an unfortunate choice of words. Yeah. Yes, sir. I think uh, every single compilation even like this really knocks on the head the idea that Sondheim can't write a tune. Mm. Mm. Absolute nonsense. I mean, you know, there are so many masterpieces <coughs> here. Uh, personally, I love Marion and Little, and I'm so mm. sorry that it was dropped from company. Yeah. Oh, 
I think it is included it's now. now. It's, it's back in, yeah. Okay. It's back in, yeah. But, so, I mean, from a melodic point of view, would you, would you agree that, oh. um, you know, uh, yeah, you delivered the lyrics absolutely brilliantly, spat them out or lyricized them, uh, you know, sang them beautifully. But uh, I was listening to the wonderful arrangements, but I was also listening to the shape of the melody, you know. Well, he's got everything, the really, doesn't he? But um, they stand up on their own. Yeah. And it, it's it's wonderful storytelling as well, you know. It's 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 like what what Shakespeare really is when it goes from from prose to verse. It gets heightened to a point, and then the music has to kick in. And so it's it's the amalgamation of all that that I think he does perfectly. He's a wonderful storyteller. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are right. Yeah, I find I find it interesting in that be, because he he's he writes for actors and he writes so well as the lyric takes you where the music takes you and it's all connected and it's all engaged and actually even though it's very difficult and very intricate once you've learnt it touch wood watch me forget everything now tomorrow but it, it, it does stay in your head I, I don't worry so much about forgetting the words as I do if I'm singing something perhaps less intellectual um, and it just it just it feels so comfortable to do and such a treat to perform his, his work. It's like a, like eating a roast dinner. It's really nourishing <laughs> and satisfying and fabulous. It's, it's su such a brilliant thing. Mm. Yes, so there, there are two things. And Sondheim often <coughs> talks about harmonics rather than melody, doesn't he? Although there is obviously melody, and you're absolutely right. But he, he prefers to talk about the harmonics of a song, mm -hmm. the, kind of whole, the whole sort of, uh, what's it like taking a... a, a what do they call that in geography? You slice through the thing, you see the whole architecture of it. Mm -hmm. the, um, cross section. <coughs> cross section. Cross section. Yeah. There we right. go. And, and, yeah. and the other thing I noticed tonight, there's not <coughs> one, one set of lyrics that lets you off the hook in the sense that there's no weak, no weak passage of lyrics ever. Mm. There's a tightness and a tautness, and it never seems as though it's been forced to do its job. It seems so natural mm. all mm. the time, mm. and I think that's... That is a sort of part of his genius, isn't it? Yeah. There's nothing yeah. unnecessary. Yeah. Everything is there for a reason. It's so detailed. And I think one of his big quotes is that the devil is in the detail. And I think there's something about it in the actual putting it together song about detail. And it's, it's, it's really lean and, and pithy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Yes, sir. Can I just have a question? Uh, the song I myself um, appreciate the putting together of these different songs. He actually, in his book, I think it's uh, Finishing the Hat or Look I Made One of Them, he calls, he describes this review as awkward. Uh -huh. He's like, Julian McKenzie and I put together quite an awkward review. So he's not, I don't think he's a massive particular fan of this, I don't know, but he hasn't seen this production, so maybe that'll change his mind. It's <laughs> 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 optimistic. But he described it as awkward. Yeah. Because I think it can be, and as I was saying about this YouTube, the, the last Broadway revival was so kind of flash that it just stripped bare anything seen tonight these amazing actors um, and added this flash and that's why I think made it made it well that's exactly you should see this one because I think it's, I think it's really very well thank you why I ask yeah you see the different stories all the songs come from yeah you wonder how it will get on mm. yeah yeah mm. well it's, it's amazing well, writing yeah, isn't it that's really good. That's really good. thank you I think it's what you're saying about the there's nothing superfluous so as soon as you put things on top of these numbers as soon as you put massive production value in, in into a show like this that's an amalgamation of all these songs and it takes away from the songs doesn't it, it takes yeah. away from the the actual necessity of telling the story and so I, I think you know why this one works uh, is that is there's a simplicity it's just about the music and it's just yeah, about yeah. The, the lyrics yeah, yeah. and to be honest we went in in rehearsal we never really talked about the sort of context of the song we never rarely talked about the show did we we kind of treated the song as a, as a standalone yeah, as yeah. a standalone we never kind of went oh into the we never really discussed the shows really very rarely no. so you know just treat us individually i just wanted to say something and it, and it, it struck me because it was so stripped bare it was almost like you know when you watch a big flashy show or you listen to something on the radio and because it was so stripped bare you you get decisions in your head yourself mm. when you're listening to the radio. And that's what, what was lovely about it, because everyone probably had a different vision of what was going on at that mm -hmm. cocktail party. Mm -hmm. That's really lovely. So you, you could do the work in your head. We oh. weren't doing it for you yeah. as well, <laughs> which is great. That's brilliant. Yeah.
Oh, we, did all, we did yeah. all say in the interval today, it's not the show to see if you're having marital problems. You <laughs> 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 yeah, can, can imagine couples sitting there stony-faced <laughs> <laughs> watching their lives being enacted on the stage. Janie, Janie actually says, she said this in a radio interview last week, um, that she went to see this with Julie Andrews on Broadway, which I think was slightly different than our version, from our version. Mm-hmm. Um, the act two was very different. But she came out of that theatre, and a week later, she called off her wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did. Then she, she says part of it was to do with you know the, the um, vision of marriage that she'd seen in front of her. <laughs> It must be, because it's a theme, isn't it? The, the, not just the marital um, dissonance or, 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 or problem or uh, rocky period. It's, if it's a, not a first date, second or third date, perhaps, mm. and either of you might be thinking, what would happen in this? You know, where, the, where, yeah. where, where might we go <laughs> yeah. from this? And you're, 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 then you're blitzed with these songs about yeah. what, what can. And That's sort I of think what our characters yeah, are, really. It's kind of the potential yeah. against their... Uh, yeah. I think that's, again, that's what I like about Country House. It's a sort of ambiguity. It's a sort of, un, you know, nothing is either one thing or the other. It's, it's sort of oh, the it's murkiness brilliant. in the middle. That's what it captures so, so brilliantly. when you're actually learning these songs, because they are songs for actors, basically, whether you look at lyrics first or you look at music first? Um, I think that we were taught uh, individually by Alex. We, we all had private meetings with him where we went to the piano and had him put down all the dots, all the notes for us, so that we could learn the melodies. I think you have to know the song. I'm just speaking for myself. You have to know the song and how it goes first before you take it apart to figure out what the guts and the meaning and the double entendre and all of the different things mm. that you pull from it. You have to know how it goes musically first and then add those layers on top. For me, that's how it works best. I don't know if it's different for you guys. No, I'm the same. I think the musicality has to be has to be so certain before you can start screwing around and with it. You've got to know what you're doing. Very much you. like Shakespeare's, uh, what do they say, uh, iambic pentameter. pentameter. Mm. Very much like that. The way that he writes so specifically, this is a quarter note, not a, not, a, not a half note or an eighth note. It's a quarter note, and it's that for a reason, because it's clipped, which tells you what the emotion of the thing is. So I think that's got to be the foundation. I could be wrong. <laughs> no, it's just, I've, I've heard many different um, takes on the situation, and um, when I was doing my music degree, we were taught, learn the words, put them over the top of the dots. Mm. Well, it's, interesting. Yeah, mm. and um, it's just, it's interesting to see Was that takes opera, or was yes, that, it was. yeah. Yeah, right. Mm. It might be. That's a, that's also a and it's a, yeah, that's exactly right. It's yeah. a different kind of. And you know yeah. what? There's a lot of people that work in musicals that can't actually read music. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a, a production. Blows my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I'm um, one of them. Th- <laughs> yeah. Really, you can't read music. Yeah. Doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the I did a production of Company out in Sheffield a couple of years back, and. Um, you know the opening song in Company, Bobby, Bobby, baby, Bobby. There were people like maybe three of us that had done musicals before. The rest had never done music musicals, and there was, I think, two. Ma- there was definitely one woman who didn't read any music, so she was learning that song off the libretto. Oh, so she was that. just with the words, and so she was waiting for. She would wait for a half beat from Bob, Bobby. She would know that that guy says it, Bobby, then, and I say it, and then this guy, and learn it that way. So. That must be so hard. It's crazy. I don't know how she did it. There were so, so many different ways that people learned. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Just, I mean, even with the equipment of Caruso, couldn't read music. He had to learn entire operas. Yeah, look what happened to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the licensed version. There's, there are, there's normally a kit. Sorry? There's normally a, a percussion, a percussion section, but we uh, we didn't have that. And I just think they wanted to give it quite 
You know what, the piano is quite a percussive instrument as well if it's playing oh. properly. So I think that there's a lot of, yeah, I think yeah. Alex said that to me once, is that yeah. it doesn't really need it because you can really hammer it out on the piano and give that nice mm. firm beat. And Theo does some amazing stomping too sometimes. <laughs> and it's the arrangement of Unworthy of Your Love is Theo, or yeah. MD arranged Unworthy of Your Love with a bit of extra. Oh, but I think he's all the Jonathan, yeah. He's up Theo, there. MD, Theo! Theo. So um, yeah, this is the like. These are all sort of a new arrangements for putting it together. I think Jonathan Tunick did them at the end. Is it in there? Do you have a question? No. Yes. Yes. Um, not so much a question. It's just a, a kind of pat off to you guys. That is so funny. There's so many moments of humour. But actually, the, one of the, the, the moment for me was, was David with that hey old friend at the end. Well, you know, I, I got a bit of a tear in my eye <laughs> um, because you follow the story is so simple. It's so simple. That's George, he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, George. Hi, George. <laughs> you did that word for word just the way I wrote it. <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> Was there a hand here? Yeah, there's one in the middle there. Uh, oh, yes, there we are. Sorry. Sorry. It's a rhetorical question. It says Sondheim rewrote the word, word with changes in the words. Did he do that? In this, you yeah. noticed, yeah, yes, he did. And there's a few little niggly ones, aren't there? There's a few odd ones that he changed, and I don't know particularly why he did it. I think it's to make it rel relevant to the situation, Maybe, the very yeah. loose situation that the show is, as opposed to what it's from. Could I, I mean, leave you as weird. Could I leave you? There's a couple of changes. There's a couple of changes. Not getting married today, but they're very. It's hot in here. All that it's hot in here, yeah. yeah. Because side by side, for some time, has a much looser. Uh, well, that's just a review. They literally come out and go, company was in, and right. then yeah, sing yeah. a song from company. And you used to have Ned Sherrin. Do you remember him? He used to really? he was the compare. He used to come up with the satirical commentary yes. and change it every week. And it was very I mean, amusing, very brilliant. But um, this is so different and taut and yeah. tight. And what you said about the Albi play is probably great. It feels to me when I watch it like a sort of Albi play set to the new, if Sondheim and Albi... Had babies. Had this babies. Would <laughs> this would be it. Yeah. Right. Anyone else? <laughs> I struggled. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it came over as, well, I well, we, we start it in our own yeah. access. Putting it together is us coming on stage, meant to be getting ready for the show and wondering where Jamie is. <laughs> Late every night, every night. Um, and then as soon as Danny says party, we go into America. It's but it's what's hard is actually singing, putting it together in our own accents, because I always want to sing that American I wonder accent. if I should adopt one. Do it like Colombian. <laughs> <laughs> Put it together. We could, that. So that we could transition. Because yeah. you're all trans Okay. So uh, you know what, he writes, he's American, so he writes for Americans, doesn't he? He's, so so there's, there's very much that, um, that accent is already in the work, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's particularly, a, it's a big stretch uh, for that yeah. sort of thing. Would, would you agree? I've tried when we did um, when I did Into the Woods we did that in British accents which works because you're at your fairy tale characters but mm -hmm. it does feel a bit weird singing it British but um, mm. it makes more it makes sense it's kind of that, 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 that I mean you're American it's that kind of American humor a lot of the time. It's mm. that Jewish wit. I was going to say, that so young. much of his writing has a New York Jewish New flavor. York, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, you, when you divorce it from the material, it loses something. Yeah. So I think it would be a disservice to the show to do it in another. Cockney. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew, we're going to chip in there. Actually, yeah, no, I was, I was just going to say, Gillian McKenzie actually came uh -huh. to our show. I mean, you spoke to her afterwards. I mean, she was... Yeah, she, she loved it. She also said that Janie D, like, she was very complimentary about them not getting married today because that's such a sing that, to actually mm. get the notes and to say the words. Alex Parker, our producer. But she was going to mention, because she directed Julie Andrews' production. Oh. Um, and she was like, even Julie Andrews... 
the notes and the words and everything time, so she was very impressed yes. with that. Well, that, uh, it, is, it is great, and there's a sequence, isn't there, where Janie does Ladies Who Lunch and does it yeah. brilliantly and not at all like Elaine Stritch. Mm. And although she does the rise, 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 we're never going to. It's not built the way she does it to, for the audience to go bananas. Mm. And then, um, then immediately, I think Caroline has a number and you've got a huge round. <laughs> I get all her glory. Yeah, yeah. well, all those songs are linked. They're meant to be sort of in, in the thoughts. And originally, Janie did have applause. There was, she did the final rise, and, the, and yeah. there, were, there was applause. That's in the school, but we changed Segment, that. Yeah. Segment. If you remember, Alex. It's like four songs, and then the last Because you want them right. to be linked, <laughs> as in they're all sort of thinking their own thoughts, but they're in a way sort of linked. It was all very arty, and, and Cameron right. McIntosh liked it, so. <laughs> <laughs> we all right. so, we were, so we were able to keep it in. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm sorry, Alex, we're just on the last question. That's fine. I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> going on, you know. we have, can we have one more from our good friend? Oh, well, we want to know when the tr show is transferring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, we do. Come on, Alex. <laughs> Can't say anything, but it's all very exciting. I think the main thing to say is that the response to the show is completely unexpected. I mean, you know, in, in the sense that That's we... That's cool. Great. Right. <laughs> in that... In that <laughs> He thinks it's awful. Life, dude. <laughs> <laughs> in just that it just wasn't kind of on the radar at all, I think, for me personally, that it, 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 what, what has happened to the show has happened to the show. And I think the very fact that it's even being considered to move forward from here is something incredibly exciting. But I'll probably, I, I can't say too much. Someone, God, I already did. someone was asking about the orchestral arrangements and what had happened with those and, and where they came up? from and how did we end up with what we had. So... Um, basically, this is actually the the thing that se um, everyone seems to be uh, confused by, including Cameron, is that this is the version that they did on Broadway in 1999, um, and it's and we've just sort of tweaked it and tailored it a little bit. Um, this orchestration on Broadway has is the one Jonathan Tunick did for the Carol Burnett production. Um, but what we've done, the main thing we've done, is we've taken out a drum kit, um, which is kind of the, my favourite thing to do at the moment because I think <laughs> it's sort of it brings an intimacy to it and a clarity that you don't seem to get when that is there. It gives it its grandeur and its big pizzazz and Broadway. Whereas what I wanted from this production is it to feel almost like these five incredible performers are getting up in your front room and sort of performing these numbers to you and the piano happens and then just these Which little... Which we could do. We're available as on Saturday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> could I say, uh, there's a good uh, prompt for me there because what's on stage awards are at the... Uh, Prince of uh, Wales Theatre on <laughs> February the 23rd. Go online, buy your tickets. <laughs> there may be one or two left. And this lot are going to be there. We might, be, might. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know about that, guys? Yes. Well, we, we, we do now. <laughs> Just found out. You can negotiate a fee. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, how, long, how much are you going to do of it? I mean, the whole show. We've been <laughs> the whole show. We're going to do a little, we, little well, snippet, little. Then taste we're going to do a little thing. taste of a few little pieces. Well, so it's not little just medley. one thing. That's so going to be great. Something Can I ask one question before you close this thing? <laughs> um, uh, this is so out of line, but I'm just going to ask it anyway because we've been having conversations about the merits of a live recording of the show versus a yeah. studio recording. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a poll tonight, for those of you who love this music, a show of hands, because, um, and I'll try to do this without any bias, because uh, a live sh recording, uh, very exciting, but extraneous noise, uh, a studio recording points up the beauty, but you miss the excitement of the live performance. Um, these are pros and cons to each. Would you show hands those who, if you were buying would prefer a studio or a live recording. Let's do studio first. How many of you would buy a studio recording first? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Theo's nine. Put his hand up. <laughs> okay, nine. How many would buy a live recording first? Okay. Hey, oh, thank you. Wow. Hey, and how many of you wouldn't buy the recording? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, so here's the next question. Oh, God. Uh, how many of you would be excited if it was a two CD? <laughs> no, no, okay, this is dead serious. If you bought the box set and it was two CDs and disc one was studio and disc two was the live recording, 
how many would buy that? Yeah. 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 We hit the jackpot. Well, ish. <laughs> the DVD, yeah, like that. Plus a fourth, my personal studio. <laughs> <laughs> it's available on Curtain Records. No, <laughs> On that note, can I say, look, thank you so much. You've been brilliant. You. And this lot, you, you should be in the pub by now. Tell, tell me. You, but tell <laughs> me. We got drunk in the first Thank you so much for doing this, and you've been absolutely wonderful. Uh, David, Daniel, Damien, whoever you are. That was the only thing I got to say. Uh, and these, these two 12 year olds who've uh, directed <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.